G'day guys, today we've got an old coaster bus that was brought in. Um, yeah, just gotta be very wary when you buy these things. If it does have gas on it, and you wanna do any modifications like change a hot plate or look at a fridge or anything like that, um, if you don't have a gas badge or a compliance certificate, then we've gotta bring it up to the, um, you know, to the standards now um, that, that have come in. And they're a lot safer and everything, so you know, well better for you. But um, yes, it's just something to think about. Anyway, I'll show you on um, what's going on with this one on the other side of the Lego. G'day guys, how are you going? Um, so this coaster was brought in, it's, yeah, it's, it's quite an old bus. Um, now the ladies just said, look, the hot, when they turn the hot water system on, water starts pouring out. Um, so what she was thinking of doing is just move the, remove the old storage hot water system. Um, then she can have that cupboard back under the bed. And then they just want to put, like hang a julka temporary on the side and then be able to hook it up with some quick connect fittings and stuff. So put a bayonet on there. Um, so I've just gone under and, and had a look at the water situation. Just looks like the hot and cold line have been joined up together. And when I looked in the back of the, the, the um, coaster as well, the hot water system looks like it hasn't been connected for a long time. It's all rusted and you know, the, the, the hot and cold are just open in, in, in the area sort of thing. So yeah, I don't know what's, what's going on. But then I've looked at another thing like the gas stove um, that's in there has got no flame failure device. That means if the wind ever blows it out, that it will just keep, the, the gas will just keep continually flowing, okay? Um, so it's very important to have those. Like I was, there's no way that I'd be sleeping in a camp without a flame failure device. So if something does happen and you know something sparks, you know you're, you're done, sort of thing. So um, that's again, we, we can't really hook that up. I've gone over the whole camper just to try and look if there was a plate, like a completion and compliance plate. There was nothing there. Um, I, I can't find anything that's been done by a, a gas fitter back in the day or anything like that. So it's very important if you go if you want to buy a, a camper or anything like that, just ask the person. You know, I need to have a gas compliance notice because otherwise, if you don't, it has to be brought up to today's standard with vents and flame failure devices and all that sort of stuff along with it, which is which is all good things, right? And um, it makes it a lot safer. But you need to have that because if you don't, any other work that goes onto the camper, you'll be, you know, you, you have to just bring it up to that standard. That might be changing over stoves, cutting vents in the side of your van, and just things like that. So yeah, I'm, you know, I can't even connect that that stove back up again, if I do any work, that's got to be disconnected. I've looked at the fridge, that's meant to be a, uh, like a sealed, you know, a sealed appliance. That means that there's no fumes or anything that can come into the, into the caravan when you, or the, the motorhome when you're sleeping, right? And I've had a look, there's a massive gap along the top, right? Massive gap along the bottom. So those fumes can come out if, if they do. I can't see any isolation valve for it. You know, it must be underneath there. Someone says, and same with the hot water system, there was no isolation valve even the um, stove, no isolation belt. So back in the day, it's never done it. So I can't even hook the fridge back up because you know it's just not legal. So if something happens, if someone's driving across the Nullarbor and they, they go to sleep at night on a cold night and the fridge is burning away, um, they could you know, go to sleep and never wake up. And then well, I'm, I'm reliable for that sort of stuff. Now this is serious stuff. There's a, there was a guy up in uh, Wedge Island, Lancelin. Um, terrible story, a guy was um, yeah, asleep with his dog and his kid in a tent and they had one of these outdoor fridges uh, or outdoor appliance sort of a fridge in a tent. And yeah, the, it burned up all the oxygen and they died of carbon monoxide poisoning, all three of them. So it was just, this, this is real guys. It's not, you know, it's not made up stuff that they're super worried about, but this, this, this stuff happens and it's um, devastating for people. So it's very important to keep it safe. Anyway, so what I've uh, suggested maybe is just to run a new gas line, like the, even the gas bottle, it's not even, you know, it's not even bolted down or strapped down or anything. It's got a, you know, like a flexible hose going off. It's just too mess. So what we're gonna do is put a new gas regulator in, run it to the other side, uh, put a gas bayonet in for a, for the Julka um, that she can hook onto and then try and get the water um, on, um, you know, coming out the side. So it's just easy, quick release to, you know, so she can use a shower and stuff inside. And then uh, maybe put an extra bayonet for, uh, you know, a um, you know, marine barbecue if they want to put that or a, or a little cooker. Uh, in, in the future if she wants to cook inside because I just can't hook that one up inside, you know, because, uh, yeah, it's just unsafe. All right, I'll show you how we go along anyway. Catch ya. G'day, guys. This is all sorted. I'll give you a quick rundown on, on what we did. Uh, so we just disconnected the hot plate, unsafe, no flame failure device, so that's that's all cool. We've uh, cut out the line to the gas fridge as well because, you know, it, it was, you know, you could, the fumes could get into the cabin, so that's not cool. So that's all disconnected now. So really the only thing that we've got on... Um, gas are just these couple of bayonets down here okay so we've just run a whole new gas main we've welded the t so any vibration is not going to come loose or anything like that which is great 
Um, instead of the gas, uh, originally the gas line came out of the bottom of the gas locker. So we've made that come out the side, a little bit higher, less rock damage and stuff like that, and then tucked it all up underneath. The hot and cold were actually just joined together underneath. Now, um, the owner of this rung up and said that she lit the hot water system, got it lit, but no hot water came out. So the lady, I thought she just recently bought this because she told me that she did, she knew there was a, she found this tank and that was a hot water tank. So she lit it up and got it going, um, but no water, the water wasn't getting hot. But when I looked inside the cupboard, I mean, inside, under the bed, it wasn't even connected. So she had that flame going inside an empty tank heating up. You imagine what that would have done to the foam and everything she left it on there. So anyway, we've, all, all they did is with the hot and cold water underneath, they just joined them up. So they just looped it, right? So I've cut that and then brought them out the side here. So as you can see, I've got a, um, a cold main coming out and a hot main coming out and the two bayonets, okay? So all you gotta do is hang, she's gonna get a, a, one of those jewelker brackets to hook on it, okay? So eventually when she gets that. Anyway, so I've got the short, this is a 1.5 meter hose. So if she wants to put it up a bit higher or whatever, she can do that, okay? So just to hook that on to the gas, you can plug it in, uh, plug it in bayonet first or hook it onto the hot water system first. Either way, it's, it's gonna be the same. No gas will leak out. Um, now I've got these lines that, that I make up, okay, just from, there's just a Pope fitting from Bunny, 8 mil, and then I've got the other, other fittings, the, the Ryko fitting that, that feeds this one, okay, and so as soon as the, the pump's on at the moment, so as soon as I plug this in, it'll, it'll start pumping the water out, okay, so now I've got the cold there, right, but if I did it on the hot side, nothing would happen, so all I have to do is grab the shower here for the jewel car, um, it's got that magnetic um, base on it here, that little clip. So that just, you know, you can pop it on the side as long as there's too much, not much bog on the, uh, you know, on the side of the uh, camper. So you, I'll plug that into the hot side, all right? And then I'll plug this into the um, jilker, on, onto the cold line. As soon as I plug that in, it'll start pumping the water through and you'll see it start coming out of the shower. And this is starting to heat up. Yep. Okay, she's lit up. And then you just got to adjust the flow on it. So you can slow the water down, heat it up to get it to 42 where you normally shower at. So you can shower out there, all good, okay? Yeah, it's got a nice temperature now, so quick and easy to do. So that's just pumping water from the tank. Now, if I wanna have water at the kitchen sink or the shower inside, then all I gotta do is unplug the, unplug the cold again so it stops the water pumping through it. Take off the hot main from, to the shower. I've got a second one of these made up, okay? So that'll just pump onto the, to the hot underneath and also to the hot into the uh, into the camper. As soon as I plug this back in, it'll start pumping through, and then you'll have hot water as soon as you turn um, the kitchen sink on in, on side. I'll, I'll show you that now. I'll, I'll take inside, turn the kitchen sink on, and you can see it start working now. So we've got the cold. Cold's fine. Good pump. And then turn the hot on, and that'll, that'll pump out the air in that, and that'll start getting hot too. And you slow the water down, you can get it up to 50 degrees easy. So now you've got hot water at the kitchen sink just by having that little hot water system hanging on the side, you know? All right, so yeah, the zest come hot now. That's great, so not too long. Now I've got the shower, I was testing the shower out, but that was just leaking, I don't know. They'll have to replace that. Probably with these old vans, it's, it's probably one of those things that, uh, that you yeah, enjoy to have an old van and all these old parts with the O-rings and stuff. But um, yeah, I'll show you the uh, around the side here too for the gas side of thing. Now the old bottle that she had, this is the old bottle. Um, that doesn't fit the new regulations. I've just got my little one on there at the moment, okay? But I'll, I'll just be taking this one out and then put hers back in there and she's just got to get a new bottle. So this has a safety a uh, safety valve on it. So when you when you open it up, you can, you know, it's really good. You can do a toolless, open it up, and then that's the new bottle that you, that's the new head that she needs. So this will still take all your old fittings through here, but this is a uh, heap safer with this one. So this is what it looks like when it's got the nine kilograms. It's got a strap that goes around here and also a strap that's sort of tied down either side. So down down a bit. And when you snug them up there, so she can't go up or down or anything because you know it's got to take the force, I think four times its weight sort of things. And these take 68 kilos. So yeah, they're all, they're all good. Got the gas badge, very important. That's done. Uh, gas locker sticker saying that don't put any batteries in here. And then all the stuff on the outside for the fiery so they know there's LPG in here. And then this is all the, you know, the, the, the checks and stuff you need to do. It's all the information about that you need to have. And we also put a new aluminium vent on here, um, you know, on, on the door. Yeah, so it's all legit now, which is, uh, which is good.
So that's it, guys. So if you're looking at getting maybe a you know hot water system, like if you've got a camper or motorhome that doesn't have a hot water system, this is a good option just to whack something on the side, and then if, you know, if it does pack up in two or three years' time, you can chuck it, put a new one, and you're not sort of stuck with this thing that's you know installed in your van. And also, you can suck water from creeks and stuff, which is very handy. I've got other videos about that. So if you want something like this done, yeah, just call your local gas plumber, and he should be able to sort it out for you. But if you live in Perth, then sure, give us a call, and we'll be happy to help you out. Thanks for watching. Uh, like and subscribe and I'll catch you later. And uh, here's the outro.